And a good florist is a good artist. Uh, not necessarily somebody who can draw pictures in that, but you, you should be able to see your design first before yeah. you actually do it. Another wonderful time is when I enter into a room that I have to recreate and there isn't much inside it and there's a lot expected of me. To be honest, there's always that little fright <laughs> and then the challenge comes. <laughs> this was her. When I walk into hotels or into private homes, I see the display. I can see the proportion, I can see the height, I can see exactly what's going to go in there. If a client is coming for a wedding, she's coming to me knowing what venue she has. Uh, the fabric that she gives me for her dress will dictate in what colors that she wants. So they roughly have an idea and I have to just increase that idea and make it a little bit more exciting the flower doesn't have to be expensive, but if the container has character, yeah. whatever you put in there looks amazing. It could be the color, it could be the shape, it could be the style, it could be the quantity that you use. I love clashing colors, and I love the contrast of different vases, colored vases to the, to the colors that are used at the top. I think in, in, in a lot of areas it's important the flowers will soften, they will add colour, they will, they will represent and, and replicate the mood that you're trying to set in, in each one of these rooms. And obviously in the newer part of the building it's, it's used as a nightclub in the evening so the, the floral displays there are obviously are far more modern, futuristic, less, less classical, traditional. Whereas if you, we are into the older parts of the house, in house 19 and 20, then I think rosemary does tend to stick to more trusted and uh, trusted floral displays that have worked uh, through time, always with a, her signature somewhere, which obviously makes uh, separates her from the rest. I think rosemary is just she's a, she's a, she's a, alive. She's she's got she's full of energy. So when she's in a room, um, she cannot possibly go unnoticed, and I think that that happens to be replicated uh, with her flowers. You know, if, if you're doing something that you enjoy and love, and it's your work, then you put on a lot of energy. I, I think the best part of my job is one when I wake up early in the morning, very early, and have to go to the flower market. Because my brain, by the time I get in my car and get to the flower market, Besides saying my prayers and battling <laughs> with my prayers, I know exactly what I'm going to put in. It's a time of um, rethinking. I really hope you're getting my good side here. This is called a white hydrangea. Normally you don't need such a tall one, but the heads of these are so beautiful. And let me show you how beautiful these are. Every Monday morning is, is, is manic. Um, most parts of our mornings are like this. And then when it gets to about 12 o'clock, it cools down a little bit more. You have to have a team that you can work with very closely because it's like marriage. You get up very early in the morning and sometimes you're with each other very late at night. So, can you see? You have a pom pom at the top, not too flat. <laughs> It's important to allow your team also to be very expressive in what they want to do and in their work. That makes a stronger team. I buy the flowers, they know how to create. We have a style and a look. They'll, we have meetings once a week that we discuss how we're going to do this for each contract so we know what we're doing. Ideas are, are fantastic to throw and having a strong team that are able to say what they feel is very important. We teach you how to have fun with flowers. 
We teach you little techniques that you just need to know that you can go home and do it yourself. When you're doing a bouquet or a posy, it's very important to know how to hold the flowers in your hand. No, you don't have to be delicate. You pick it up, you put it on, <laughs> you know, and look, you twist. If you start off with one or two flowers first, and then the next one you place in an angle, and then twist, it doesn't damage the flower at all. If you're going to, if you're going to be too rough, the head's going to break. It can happen, but you can handle it. It wants to be handled and put into shape. Every household must have one of these. <laughs> okay, okay. Place it in the vase. Just nip the ends. There. Yep. RL also teaches you how to play with candles. It's very important to be able to have candles go in and out of your displays so you get the reflection, which is very beautiful. You can break rules with flowers, and that's what's so exciting. You can, you can have something so tiny in a huge vase, and it looks great. Tall six-foot vases, beautiful, with just tops of roses. Tall six-foot vases with flowers shooting in an angle. You know, it's how you, how you use what you have. Flowers are love, passion, how are you, are you okay? Hey, let's get to meet, uh, let's, let's be happy. You don't have to say much with flowers. Flowers say it all. <laughs>